Hello everybody, my name is Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics, and today I want to talk to you about Bluetooth Low Energy. I mean, Bluetooth has been one of those standards that has really helped us kind of get things connected, especially in the body area networks, and get our local things put together. But classic Bluetooth was really designed to replace cables, and it covers many protocols with speeds increasing with new versions. Power consumption was not always the primary issue for this technology, and it was not always suitable for wireless boards running on a battery that only needs to send a few bytes of information. Well, this is where Bluetooth Low Energy comes in. This is also known as BLE. Sometimes people refer to it as Bluetooth Smart, and it was contrived to consume as low power as possible. At the moment, there are three versions called 4.0, 4.1, and 4.2 that have been released, and version 5 will be coming soon. Now, when you're thinking about the different versions, the big differences are that 4.1 can, devices can act as both a hub and an endpoint simultaneously. In version 4.0, devices could only really have one role where a master could communicate with several slaves, but could not be a slave and a master at the same time. 4.1 has increased the flexibility by allowing a device to behave as both master and slave. Now, 4.2 has increased the packet size from 39 bytes to 257 bytes for what's known as the PDU, or Packet Data Unit. It's implemented some better security algorithms and has IPv6, which helps a device to connect directly to the internet. It gives it its own IP address. This is unique and a new feature. It's going to make things a lot easier. Now, in this series of tutorials, we will explain in detail all the packets and layers, and we'll present solutions and tools available from some of our suppliers. We have people like Nordic Semiconductor, ST Microelectronics, Cypress, and Silicon Labs. As most of the tools work with BLE 4.1, in these tutorials, we'll focus on this version. You'll be able to upgrade to 4.2 once it's available on all the platforms. There's not a huge amount of difference. So the BLE architecture has the following stacks. We have the physical layer that transmits in the 2.4 GHz radio spectrum with a GFSK or Gaussian frequency shift keying modulation. Then there's the link layer. This describes how two devices can use a radio link to transmit information from one to another. The link layer has a simple state machine with only five states. You've got the standby mode where the device is just sitting there. There's an advertising mode when the slave needs to make a connection and if it is sending data that just goes to anyone, it's not specifically meant for another device. And there's a scanning mode when a device wants to listen to what other devices are advertising. There's an initiating mode. This is sent from the future master to the device that is advertising and asked to create a specific connection. And then lastly, there is a connected mode. This is when two devices are connected and sending each other data packets purposefully. So it has a starting point and end point, not general advertising. When Bluetooth was defined, the architecture could be a two chip solution, host and controller. The HCI or host controller interface is the interface between these two components. The HCI has two main functions. It sends commands to the controller and receives events back. And it sends and receives data from a peer device. L2CAP, L2CAP, is a legacy standard of Bluetooth as well. For BLE, the L2CAP multiplexes three different channels and it enables segmentation and reassembly of the packets that are larger than the underlying radio can deliver. So more data in more frequencies put together. Data is stored in the attribute protocol or ATT format and defines how the attribute is managed, the type of attribute, how to find, access, read or write data, and much more. The Generic Attribute Protocol, or GATT, groups and combines these attributes and defines how all the data is discovered and then transferred between devices. This table is the way data is stored and will make sense once we study attribute protocols. Finally, there's the Generic Access Protocol, or GAP, and this makes the device visible to the outside world and determines the role of the device in the network. Before we understand how to use the tools and how to program devices of our suppliers, we're first going to study Bluetooth Low Energy in details. We're going to look at the packets of each layer, how to advertise, how to handle a connection, how to store and retrieve data, the security issues that might be present in it, and so on.